Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. I apologize for recently using different narrators in my videos. This is because the narrator I usually use has become difficult to access. Whenever I find a suitable replacement, I always encounter minor shortcomings with that narrator. So in essence, I ask for forgiveness for this issue. Hopefully things will improve in the future. Anyway, as usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. I remember a time not too long ago when you could sort of see what was happening in the world, even in your own backyard with some degree of certainty. If you looked hard enough, got past the politics and the greedy capitalists and the ideological socialists, you could make some sense of it. Even then it took some work. You had to read a lot and find journalists, historians, and authors you could somewhat trust. Throw in a bit of common sense here and there, and you could pretty much lock on to a rather trustworthy sense of what was true and what probably was not. At least it seemed that way. There were still always mysteries. People were saying one thing and doing another. But there were stakes in the ground, pillars of truth, certain things you could trust, still with a grain of salt, but for the most part trustworthy. Take the American press, for example. Yes, weird things are discovered here and there with the press during the best of times, but I remember trusting the press. Remember the great Washington Post revelations during the Watergate scandals in the 1970s? A great book and movie came out of it, all the president's men. It was journalism at its best, was it? The controlled manner in which it was presented to the public to be assured of accuracy and relevance. I was very proud of that paper. But was even that the truth? Yes, there were problems with journalistic suppressions, particularly during the Vietnam conflict. But truth always seemed to prevail. Was it all as it seemed? Unfortunately, I don't think so, not even then. But it sure seemed like there were various bastions of truth you could depend on. I remember even with the JFK assassination, I thought the corruption revealed in that fiasco was limited. At the very beginning of my investigations into the event, I had no understanding that the entire government of the US was in on it. I thought the unscrupulousness was limited. I believed that with the Watergate scandal as well. Even when 9-11 hit us, I didn't realize how deep the cancer penetrated our government, the US and even the world. Little did I know back then what a mess everything was in. And to tell you the truth, I still don't know the extent of it. For a shrew with a pretty long nose, I am certain I don't know the half of it. It is pretty daunting. When did all these lies and corruption start? There may not be a start date, meaning it has always been present in some form. Going back to caveman times, we would probably find the first effort by a ruling class to imprison the masses and create a world of illusion that was entirely under their control. Loosely within my lifetime, since the early 50s, the CIA and its counterpart in the Soviet Union, the KGB, made a great effort to manipulate the media with planted news stories with the media giants of both countries, the New York Times and Washington Post in the US, and Pravda in the USSR. Claims state that these two ruling governments had each other hoodwinked as well as the masses. For example, during Nikita Khrushchev's time as the big kahuna of the Soviet Union, he continuously shook his nuclear big stick, claiming the USSR could make nuclear missiles like making sausages. They couldn't. Most historians say the U.S. was tricked by the USSR's nuclear posturing during the early years of the Cold War. I doubt seriously if they were tricked, because if they were aware of Moscow's true number of nukes, the Soviet ruse gave them a great excuse to increase the U.S. defense budget year after year and convince the American people, and the people of the world, that there was good reason to be terrified. Fear always is a good thing to have in your back pocket when you are trying to control people. The Soviet Union was a paper tiger at least in the 50s and early 60s. After the Cuban Missile Crisis and after Khrushchev's reign, the Soviet Union actually did start making missiles like sausages. Or did they? It is difficult to tell how many of the pesky nuclear warheads were out there born from either side. The information and misinformation and propaganda and lies and corruption are just too massive to comprehend and cut through to reach the truth. The Soviet bomb scare of the Cold War, 
is only a teeny-weeny example of the false reality that we have been fed for decades. And needless to say, it has only gotten worse. Much worse. Now, with advanced technology and artificial intelligence, it is easier than ever to manipulate information and thus manipulate reality. We can't even tell now if the President of the United States making a speech is the real flesh and blood Biden, a hologram, a biological clone, or a robot. The right hand most definitely does not know what the left hand is doing, but I can guarantee you there is a clear, conscious agenda, and that agenda is not confusing to those executing it, nor is it difficult to define. But it is very difficult to comprehend, at least for the blind masses. The simple things, however, are still believable. The love you feel for your partner, for your children, and your family. The peace you experience taking a walk along the beach, or in the stillness of a forest. The joy you feel dancing and listening to music, and the awe you experience when looking at a piece of art. The laugh of a baby will always be true, the slobbering lick of a dog, and the look in his or her eye when expressing their unconditional love for their master. These truths are also massive, but they are easy to comprehend. We were born with an acute understanding of their essence, meaning, and purpose. I have seen many memes commenting that to understand what is happening in the world, we have to forget everything we have learned and everything we have been taught to believe everything. This demand is rather daunting, albeit truer than you would like to believe. If you think you have figured it out, and that figuring doesn't include forgetting everything you thought you knew, then you can be sure you have not figured it out. Remember that this confusing world is a chess game played by the elite and powerful. We are not players but are pawns. It is not real from a spiritual and meaningful perspective, although we are told it is. So if this world's unreal reality is indeed too massive to comprehend, it stands to reason it is also too big to do anything about. So what do we do? We continue to fight, regardless of whether we think we will win. We continue to throw sand into the machinery. We continue to expose the lies and subterfuge. We continue to write and read articles, to create a free press, to communicate through social media and the internet as long as it lasts. Then we go through other means of communication, and we continue to speak out and never comply. To quote one of those world leaders who was not what he appeared to be himself, Winston Churchill. Never give in, never give in, never, 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 in nothing, great or small, large or petty. Never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. Never yield to force. Never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Still good words, regardless of who said them. Now. It's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.